back a few years ago, I built my friend a custom keyboard that looks pretty much identical to this one, but I wanted to build him a PC that looked a lot like this keyboard. So we're gonna be using this Fractal Design Node 202, which is an older case. This one was used and kind of has some scuffs and marks on it. And uh, as you can see here, there's some, uh, I don't know what that is, looks like droppings of some sort. So we're gonna clean this case up. Also, we're gonna be using a GTX 1080 Classified, which is a pretty nice card. And I also wanted to make this video about benchmarking this card to see how it holds up in 2023. So let's get to the build. We're gonna be using an i3-12100, which is not the fastest, but a decent quad-core processor. And 32 gigs of DDR4, along with a crucial P3 drive, and an ASUS Prime motherboard. Since this card has been out of commission for quite a few years at this point, I decided it's probably a good idea to check the thermal paste, and sure enough, it was dry as a rock. So we're gonna swap out the thermal paste. Unfortunately, I did not have enough of the quality paste that I usually use, so I had to use some kind of cheap paste, but it'll do just fine. This card was pretty easy to take apart and put back together. That's because EVGA is just a really decent company and I really wish they were still making graphics cards at this point. As for the power supply, we're gonna be using a Lian Li SFX SP750. This is actually a really nice power supply, fully modular with even sleeved cables. And as you can tell by the size of it next to that NZXT power supply, it is tiny. And it does come with some nice sleeved cables, as I said, and uh, yeah, should hold up just fine with the 1080 and even do good for an upgrade in the future if he was to change out the 1080. So far, cable management in this case is really decent, actually. I was surprised at how easy it was to put everything into place. I didn't even really need to use zip ties, as you'll see in a moment. And then um, they use this pretty unique riser cable which goes in and it's a hard riser instead of a soft one which is traditionally what they use so you're able to kind of just pop this in and then you can pop in the extension on the other side and then plug in the gpu this gpu barely fits i will say that the 202's size is kind of an issue i would say two slot cards at most is the max now it's time to clean this up and we're gonna do this wood grain finish to give it that retro aesthetic that'll blend in nicely with TV units or home consoles. I didn't have enough, so I had to cut some side strips to get this to line up perfectly, but this uh, vinyl is easy to cut and nice to work with and looks half decent. It's not as good as a D brand skin or something high end, but it'll do just fine. Also, I didn't want to leave it unventilated, so I had to cut out some of the vents, but since we're using an i3, it's not gonna get too, too hot. So I decided to not cut every single one of them for the sake of time, and also because I kinda wanted to do like a little design on it. Let me know what you guys think. Believe it or not, this took a lot longer than it looks. It was actually pretty annoying to do, but I think it looks okay. Time for the finished product. Now, since this is like a console-like computer, I'm gonna bring it down and test it on my 4K TV. Also, this is Papacito. If you haven't met him before, he's featured on the channel often. So yeah, let's see if this turns on. Now, the 1080 is a little bit too old to do 4K, so we're gonna do 1080p benchmarks, and let's get to those right now. 
So for today's first title to benchmark, we're going to be benchmarking Starfield, and this game is set at all low settings. Jumping into space, we see an average of around 40 frames per second, and lows in the 20s. This game's optimization, even in space with this GTX 1080, is really rough. I feel like there is something up with Pascal and this game. That being said, if you can look past some of its flaws, turning on FSR on the 75% resolution scale does help a little bit and make the game more playable. In the city, we're seeing an average around 30 frames per second, with highs in the 40s and lows again in the 20s. The texture is pretty rough with FSR on and the 75% scale, but there's really not much you can do as this game just seems to be really suffering on this card. Switching to more open areas, you can almost see 60 frames per second for the first time, but then going back into combat or areas with a lot of textures and crowded spaces, you'll see it drop back into the 40s and even again back into the 20s at that 1% low. Up next we have Cyberpunk, and we're running a mixture of medium and high settings, and we are using FSR 2 with the quality preset. With these settings, this game actually runs surprisingly well, hovering around that 75 to 80 frames per second, and even goes up into the 90s depending on where you are. Going into areas that are more filled with cars and pedestrians, you'll see it drop into the 50s. I don't know what happened here. But for the most part, the game runs at a solid 75 to 80 frames per second. I decided to get into a little shootout with these cops to see if I could get the frame rate to dip, and it dips a little bit, but mostly stays consistent as to what I had mentioned before. Staying in that 70 to 80 range, and everything looks pretty good. Up next is Jedi Survivor, and we're running all low settings with native resolution. Unfortunately, this card with the 8GB of RAM kind of runs into a problem, as you can see here, but it will stay above the 30 frames per second and averages around 50. This might be one of those experiences where you can bump up the textures a little bit and lock it to 40 frames per second to get a more consistent experience, but that being said, it's still very playable and it still looks pretty good too even at the low settings. One other thing that I noticed when I was testing this game is that FSR doesn't really do anything when enabled, so it was better to just play at native resolution because the one frame per second difference really just wasn't worth it in my opinion. There is something that I did notice that might be a deal breaker for some, but playing this game on low settings starts to give it this almost cell shaded look in certain places, especially on buildings, neon signs, and vehicles like that car there. You'll get this kind of strange effect, but it's not too bad. Up next we have Red Dead Redemption 2, and we're running this on a mixture of medium and high settings. We're also using FSR 2.0 just to get a more consistent experience. You can turn it off and get roughly 60 frames per second, but getting that extra bump 10 to 15 FPS really makes the game more smooth and enjoyable. This is one of those games that has held up very well over the years and almost looks better than some newer releases. The textures on the grass, the water, the sky all look really nice and it shows how optimized this game actually is. Rockstar did such a good job with this one. This one hour long playthrough got us an average of 84 FPS with 1% lows of 62 frames per second. I was happy to see that this game stayed in the 70 to 80 range during shootouts and situations that are hectic. 
don't think Rockstar is going to be sharing any secrets anytime soon, but it would be nice if other developers could take a page out of Rockstar's book. Next is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and this game is on the balanced presetting with motion blur off and FSR enabled. This game looks pretty bad at the low setting, to be honest. I really wish I could jack up the settings, but to get that nice frame rate above 100 frames per second, you just have to have the balanced or low setting enabled. We got an average frame rate of 99 FPS with a 1% low of 60, which is pretty decent. That being said, I did see lower frame rates in other matches, depending on the server and the map that you're playing on. So just keep that in mind if you're going to play this game on a GTX 1080. And finally, for The Last of Us. We're actually going to be using all medium settings instead of low settings because I did not see a big difference in performance, but I did see a big difference in texture and quality of the game. Unfortunately, it was really hard to stay directly above 60 at all times, so there are dips into the 50s and down to the 40s. But the game's average frame rate stayed around 60 and the minimum frame rate was 44. I think now is a good time to mention that this game did crash four times before I got it stable. The issue was deep in the settings, there were a few settings still on ultra or high. If you just automatically set it to the low or medium preset, some of the other settings at the bottom do not change. So just keep that in mind. Uh, once I changed those settings, it stopped crashing, so I'm convinced that that's what it was. If you guys enjoyed the video drop a like on the video subscribe if you want more and i will see you guys next time